Okay, we've seen how we could represent different information using a combination of bits, whether it's pictures, text, sound. But of course, computers perform computation, and they perform some remarkable feats of computation, whether that's modeling a landing on Mars or doing a simulation of global climate change. But how do they do that? How do they perform the computation when really at their core, they're just dealing with ones and zeros. Well, rather surprisingly, all the computation can be described in terms of three very simple, what we'll call bitwise functions. And these are also called logical functions because when we're dealing with bits, sometimes we think of those as true and false. In other words, logical. And the three functions that we'll talk about are or, and, and not. Let's start with the OR function, and we have two input bits. Let's call them A and B, and consider the various combinations we could have. They could both be 0. We could have 0 and 1. We could have 1 and 0. And we could have 1, 1. Now, that's our input. Those are fed into the OR function, and there's a single bit of output. And if both the inputs are 0, the output's 0. If B is 1, or high, or true, then the output is 1. But if A is 1 and B is 0, then the output is also 1. And if both inputs are 1, then the output is 1. So you can see where the OR name comes from. If either A or B are 1, then the output is is one. So this arrangement of inputs and outputs that show all the possible combination of inputs and the corresponding outputs, this is known as a truth table. And we represent this function sometimes in drawings using this symbol. And this is sometimes called a gate. So we have this curvy side here. Kind of think of that as the arc of an O for OR. The two inputs here and the output on the other side of that gate. Next, let's discuss the AND function. And again, we have our four different combinations of inputs. The input bits A and B, those are fed into the AND function. So considering what A and B are, if they're both zeros, if both inputs are zero, then the output's zero. If A is zero, B is one, the output's still zero. And if A is 1, B is 0, the output's still 0. The only way we get 1 on the output is if both A and B are 1. So again, we can see where the name AND comes from. Now the symbol used for this function is shown here. And now we have a straight edge on this side of the gate. And you could think of that as, well, an A, capital A, has a straight edge. So two inputs, the output is A and B. OK, finally, the third function we'll discuss is the not function. And this just has a single input. We'll call it the bit A. And that could be 0 or 1. We feed that into the not function. And this just changes true to false or false to true. So if we have 0 as the input, the output is 1. If we have 1 as the input, the output is 0. The symbol for the not function is this triangle. So we feed in the bit A, and we get out not A. OK, now we can combine these very simple functions to obtain much more complicated behavior, more complicated functions. So we combine those gates, and here's an example where we have three bits of input, they're fed into some not functions, into AND gates, an OR gate, and we don't really care what this function is doing, but in the computer, we might have millions of these gates, and they'll perform the computation that we desire. Now, if you look closely at this, this is a three input AND gate, but I only mentioned a two input AND gate before. So how do we do this? Well, actually, we can realize this with two two input AND gates. So there's an AND gate with A and B coming in. And we could take another 
AND gate here, feed in C to that, and then that gives us the behavior of a three input AND gate. So that's A and B and C. And this four input OR gate is realized with three two input OR gates. Now, if you think about this function long enough, stare at this, you might be able to figure out that this is actually a voting function of sorts. If two of these bits are one, or all three are one, then this output will be a one. Otherwise, if either zero or one of these inputs is one, then the output will be zero. Okay, I actually lied to you. I said all the computations can be done using three simple functions. It turns out we could reduce it all to just one single function. So if we combine the AND function with the NOT function, we get a new function that's called NAND. So symbolically, this would be the AND function, and then we just feed that into this NOT gate. And that gives us A NAND B. And if we are going to realize these gates on a chip, we're doing it electrically, and it takes six transistors to realize this gate. It takes two transistors to realize that gate. We're not truly concerned with that, but if we combine these, we use a new symbol. We just put this bubble on the end of an AND gate, and this can be implemented with four transistors. So it's rather strange. We started with six and two. We stick them together. You might think it'd be eight, but no, it can be realized with just four transistors. And the truth table for this, here are the four combinations of input. Now, we know the AND function was 0, 0, 0, 1. We just invert that. We feed that into a NOT function. So we get 1, 1, 1, and 0 for the NAND function. It turns out everything we do in a computer, we could just realize as a combination of these NAND gates. 